Hi, good morning. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and I'm Bruce Linecooler. Last week, we were talking about man cave collectibles with a little twist for the ladies. Today, we'll be talking about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and history. We come to you every Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m. on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and now on FM 103.7. Brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. Coming up this week at the store, that's right, starting today, September 27th, the Brass Armadillo will be hosting a bi-monthly free appraisal seminar. Starts at 11, and it's on a first-come, first-served basis. Anyone can bring in up to two items and get them appraised for free. But today, we're talking about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and history. My guest today is Marty Lugin. Marty is a very no- is very knowledgeable about Pyrex collectibles, and I really enjoy uh, the fact that I have her here today. Good morning, Marty. Good morning. Well, Marty, let's kind of delve into some of the topic of Pyrex. Uh, but before that, I want to know a little bit more about you. Okay. You've, you've been a dealer at the Brass Armadillo for quite some time now. Uh, just how long has it been? Bruce, we're starting our eighth year at the Brass. And eight it's years. A, and it's a way for our, my husband and I to make ourselves get off the couch. We're <laughs> retired, so this keeps us very busy. I, I do. Both you and Bill are just wonderful people, and you have such a quaint booth there at the Brass. I enjoy shopping in it myself. Uh, but I, I'm interested in our topic today, Pyrex collectibles. They're, you know, they're really hot right now. Could you tell us just a little about what Pyrex collectibles are? Yes, Pyrex collectibles are the glassware manufactured by the Corning Glass Company, and that would be the Pyrex division that makes the dishes. And they include kitchenware for homemakers. It started with glass ovenware, then it went to flameware, and in 1947, the color patterns were being used. Wow. Well, how did you personally get started in collecting Pyrex? Well, that's funny, Bruce, because I don't collect Pyrex. I love Pyrex, (laughs) but I get my fix from selling it in our booth. I do have a set of Pyrex Cinderella bowls in pink gooseberry that I use almost every day. They were a a wedding present over 50 years ago. Well, I you know, I get that from a lot of dealers that they actually like being a dealer because they can fine-tune their collections and they can keep looking for that, you know, really special one that they've been looking for for a long time. That's correct. Uh, but I understand Pyrex has a, a strong history. You mentioned earlier they got started in 1915? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, so do you think anyone can get involved in collecting or uh, finding that special piece of Pyrex? Pyrex is getting a little harder to find, but there's a lot available at the brass mall and several dealers sell it and i think um it's it's cost a lot more money now to purchase the pieces so we have to raise our prices but uh, and it was a very cheap piece of glass when it was first started but it's it's something that's fun to me yeah it is fun and and all of the different um types and styles there are make it make it to be you know quite the collectible uh but just where does pyrex fit into uh the home for the person who wants to collect it well in my opinion pyrex should be displayed and in most places it is displayed in the kitchen people buy clean out a cabinet and store it there or they buy bookcases or old utility carts and they store it there. But I do know that there's people out there that collect Pyrex, and they pack it in a box and put it in their basement. Oh, yeah. That's not necessarily showing off the all the intricate, you know, styles, colors, and patterns by doing that. Absolutely not. Well, uh, where can those interested in Pyrex collectibles find Pyrex pieces? Well, the first place I look is the Brass Armadillo. <laughs> yes. And Are... then... And then you can find them at places like the Goodwill and flea markets mm-hmm. and other antique stores. But there's a lot of antique stores out there that don't have a Pyrex dealer. So um, so to find the completed 
pieces or the pieces that are all there and in good condition, your best bet, you know, if you're looking for a specific color or style, is a brass armadillo or a place like that. That's correct. And it's very difficult when we're out shopping for our Pyrex to find a complete set. Uh, I believe that. But if you're just now joining us, we're talking about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and history. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. And if you'd like to become a dealer at the Brass Armadillo, just mention that you heard it here on the show, and we'll give you a special rental incentive. But, uh, Marty, uh, I think it's very interesting. You know, you're pretty much self-taught, and you've, you're a real wealth of knowledge when it comes to Pyrex and the pieces that they had to offer. But, uh, you know, what types of pieces are there, and what are some of the different uses that might be found with Pyrex pieces? Well, Pyrex today is not necessarily used as it was in days gone by. There are... Um, Several pieces that compromise a set, and um, the first one, my favorite, is the Pyrex, the Cinderella Pyrex mixing bowls. And these are the bowls with the pouring attachment to the side. And then there's four or five piece regular mixing bowls, small and large casserole sets that consist of three different sizes with the casserole dishes around and oblong. Okay. With lids or pouring capability. There are refrigerator dishes, usually in a set of one large square, one oblong, and two small dishes that stack, all having clear lids. Oh, wow. And the reason for this is because they're great space savers for your refrigerator. They're stackable, most <laughs> of your pieces, or the bowls fit inside of each other. So that's that's a good plus for using it. Now, originally... There was pieces that were cake pans, loaf pans, vegetable casseroles. Yeah. And times have changed. Cake pans are baked, are usually not even baked at home anymore. But they make a great pan for biscuits or rolls. The loaf pans can not only be used for bread, but they are a great meatloaf pan. Oh, yum. You're making me hungry. (laughs) The casserole (laughs) sets are good refrigerator (laughs) dishes. Other pieces that were introduced by Pyrex are butter dishes, salt and pepper shakers, coffee servers, deviled egg dishes, snack sets, and berry bowls. At one time, Pyrex even had their own table setting, which is the round um, dinner plate, and they were white, and they have a band of color on the outside, and uh, they come in about three different colors. They're gray, coral, and of course, the turquoise, which is a very popular color. Wow. So they actually had a whole set of dishware from early times. That's correct. Is, is, are there a lot of different pieces of the, of the dishware sets? Um, I've never had a complete set, but uh, this, I've had a, a single serving, and it was the plate, cup and saucer, and a, a vegetable or a salad bowl. I'll be dogged. I, I know that moving forward to today, because you said it's uh, the Pyrex, who is the Corel company, they went into dishware later, but we're talking about the earlier pieces, which That's are probably correct. harder to find, I would think. They're, they're getting more and more difficult to find all the time, and you very seldom find a whole set, or you'll find pieces where the lid is broken, which is the most common thing to break. Yeah, or chipped. I know that yes. that's why people seek us out, you know, at the antique mall, right? Right. So if you're out shopping and you want and you run across some Pyrex lids, it's a good idea to pick those lids up because sometimes those lids at least make your piece more valuable, but the lids sold separately can bring more money than the original piece is going to go on. I can see that because they have their favorite set that they have right. and they and they just need a new lid. Well, you're listening to I Antique with Bruce and our show today is Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a strong history. We are brought to you by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and iAntique.com. 
That's I-A-N-T-I-Q-U-E dot com. You can also follow us on Facebook at Kansas City Brass Armadillo. Coming up today, September 27th, the Brass Armadillo is hosting our free appraisal seminar. We do this every other month, and it starts at 11 today, and it's on a first-come, first-served basis. Come early, because we're going to have some treats for breakfast, and we're going to have our appraisers in the house. Next week's show will be Lamps and Lighting with a perspective from The Shady Lady. We'll dig into just what you can do to save money on and or make money on unique lighting. We'll be right back, and when we come back, we'll be talking to Marty a little bit more about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and history. KCMO Talk Radio, where Kansas City connects with a Dave Ramsey show. First mistake people do is they don't go get a will. Then the second mistake is when they get a will, they keep everything secret. This reading of the will in the attorney's office and people are cut in or out of the will that were unexpected. You know why it's in the movies? It's a good drama. Dave Ramsey, weekdays 9 to 11 a.m. on KCMO Talk Radio 710, now FM at 103.7. Kansas City, now you're talking. KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we want. We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. Hey, this is Greg Knapp, and fall brings a lot of falling leaves, and a lot of them get in your gutter. How would you like to remove gutter cleaning from your chore list forever? Just call up my guys at LeafGuard. See, at LeafGuard, they have the one-piece gutter system. The gutter and the cover all in one piece. Other gutter solutions use covers or screens. They pop into your existing old gutter. Sometimes they even make the clogging problem worse. But LeafGuard comes with a lifetime, transferable, no-clog warranty. If anything ever goes wrong, they come out with their ladders, climb up and check it out for you. You can get 60% off labor and a $100 gas card with a whole home gutter system. They even have special financing with no payments and no interest for 12 months. It's available for qualified buyers. Don't risk life and limb to clean your gutters. Get LeafGuard and you never have to do that chore again. Get a free gutter analysis and find out if LeafGuard is right for your home. 913-204-0001. 913-204-0001. It's 913-204-0001 for LeafGuard. Enjoy a gourmet, inclusive vacation at Eldorado Spa Resorts and Hotels and Azul Hotels by Charisma when you book through Cruise Holidays of Kansas City. These luxurious properties are all located in the Riviera Maya, Mexico and feature a la carte themed dining. No reservations required, unlimited premium beverages, beach and pool butlers, freshly grown produce in on-site greenhouse, amazing spa facilities, spacious suites including guaranteed connecting suites to accommodate family and group stays, amazing destination wedding locations including chapels, sky weddings, beachfront gazebos and more. Azul Hotels by Charisma are family-friendly properties equipped with Fisher-Price co-branded family facilities and teen club. Our pack-and-play program features strollers, cribs, playpens, changing table, baby bottles, sterilizers, and Gerber gourmet food. Receive great benefits if you book today. Call Cruise Holidays of Kansas City, 816-505-1500 to plan your gourmet inclusive getaway and receive free upgrades, romantic candlelight dinners on the beach, spa treatments, and more. That's Cruise Holidays of Kansas City, 816-505-1500 or online at cruiseholidayskc.com. Having fresh, reliable batteries is a necessity. Whether you're in a commercial, industrial, or a residential environment, batteries are essential. Wholesale Batteries has the right batteries for laptops, ATVs, power sports, computer backups, automotive, marine, portable electronics, you name it, and they've got it. Wholesale Batteries, the one-stop shop that keeps you powered up and ready to go. Go to WholesaleBatteries.net or call 913-342-0113 or outside the metro, 1-800-886-8658. Wholesale Batteries gives you the power. 
the Diagnostic Imaging Center's Health and Wellmobile in participation with Title Boxing Clubs. Roxy's Healthy Treats and Hendrick Buick GMC Cadillac brings health and wellness directly to you. Free and low-cost health screen scans and health education information are provided daily in communities all around Kansas City. Learn your heart age, get fit in 15 minutes, find out your risk for diabetes and heart disease, or visit our Healthy Breast, Healthy Body exhibit. For specific dates and times and services offered at each Health and Wellmobile tour stop, visit us online at healthwellmobile.com. That's healthwellmobile.com. We are Talk Radio, KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Welcome back. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and I'm your host, Bruce Limecooler. We come to you every Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m. on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and on FM 103.7. Our show today is Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a history. We are sponsored by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and iAntique.com. Coming up next week, we're going to be doing a whole show on lamps and lighting with a perspective from the Shady Lady. But when we left off, Marty was telling us all about some of the different pieces of Pyrex. And I want to delve a little bit deeper into that. Uh, Marty, what would you say are the most popular pieces of Pyrex? Bruce, I believe, and what I sell the most of, is the bowl sets. Okay. But right next to that are the casserole sets, which can be used for refrigerator dishes and the refrigerator sets. The American people eat differently now because the women are now working outside the home, and the children are very busy along with outside activities. The vegetable dishes are not as popular now as they were in the past. I can believe that. So the the nesting bowls, why do you think people have such fond memories of the bowl sets that, that come there that are made in Pyrex? I think that people buy things that they remember, and if they remember mom or grandma Cooking a special dish uh, <laughs> in a certain piece. Mine was always mashed potatoes, and she got that out, and then I knew I was going to get the big bowl with mashed potatoes, <laughs> the little bowl with gravy, and hey, that we were set. That's correct. And not only that, uh, cakes. I, I remember my mom and grandmother getting the, the bowls out just to make a cake. Would you agree with the 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 that people also like these bowl sets because unlike many bowl sets today, they can compact. That's correct. They take a, a small amount of storage space. So I I know a lot of people call them nesting bowls. That's right. Because that's exactly what, what they, they do. Are. When you have the whole set, boom, 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 all f- all four bowls. They it's like a perfect nest. little nest. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. But I'll tell you one of the other ones that I find that that I really like is the stack refrigerator dishes. You call them casserole dishes. What are the many uses of those? Well, the casserole dishes and the refrigerator dishes are two separate pieces. The refrigerator dishes com, uh, come in four different four, sizes? Come in four different sizes. There's a large square one. There's a rectangular one and two smaller ones that have then they all have the glass lids the casserole dishes came in two two different sizes there's a large set and a small set and they too have glass lids on those that are just make wonderful storage and you can stack them in the refrigerator they take up little space and then you can actually reheat in them right that's so you correct. don't have to change containers that's correct i know my sister told me because she knew I worked at the Brass Armadillo. And she was getting married, and she says, I want some glass dishware. I want some Pyrex. And uh, I was like, well, why? I mean, of course, I was still a young man at that time. And she said, I just love using them, and they're so pretty. <laughs> well, but one of the unique things about Pyrex is that they come in many different patterns. What are some of the patterns? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, there are over 150 patterns. Whoa. Not all are common patterns. They include special promotion patterns, unknown name patterns, and restaurant wear. Wow. Well, before we go any further, but if you're just now joining us, we're talking about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a history. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. If you'd like to become a dealer, 
Just tell us you heard it here, and I'll take special care of you and give you a special rental incentive. Uh, so the patterns, you said 150? Uh, over 150. Over 150. What are some of them? Well, my favorite is a pattern called butter print. Butter print. I call it Amish wedding. Okay. It has roosters and um, Amish, an Amish couple on them, and they come in the turquoise and white, which is the most popular color. But they also come in other colors, like orange or black and white. The turquoise is obviously the most favorite pattern. I also like friendship. Friendship is a bright orange, red, and white. I'm into roosters, so I really like the fact that that piece has a rooster on it. On the lid, right? Right. Or does it have it on the side, too? Uh, It's on the side, and sometimes there's a clear glass lid that goes over it that has the pattern on it. Wow. There are other patterns called mushroom, autumn harvest, and daisy, which are very popular. And the patterns came about at different time frames, so they depict when, you know, when a piece was made, right? That's correct. It was 1947 when they started making the first set of the sta- uh, the uh, nesting bowls. Really? Wow. Well, you mentioned something earlier uh, to me during our break that, because I only thought that they came, you know, that they were just for oven-only glass But you said there's such a thing as a Pyrex Flameware. What's that? Pyrex Flameware was the second product that was introduced by Pyrex. The first set was the ovenware, which consisted of any clear glass baking dish that you could use in the oven. Flameware is something that could be used over an open fire or a gas stove. And it consisted of... Double boilers, coffee pots, and teapots. So they actually were they made of glass as well? Of course. Even the handles were glass. Oh wow. That's amazing. So why did they need Pyrex that was able to stand up to flames? Pyrex is a a, a product um, that uh, has the coining company has been in business for a long time. And they not only sell the heat-resistant Pyrex dishes, but they also sell medical items, test tubes, beakers. Now they're into glass jewelry. And the reason for this is because Pyrex is so... The company wants to be very versatile, I'm I'm guessing, right? That's correct. They uh, have never reproduced any of the patterns that are available in the Pyrex. And it was probably in the middle 80s that they quit making the pattern. They've never been uh, reproduced, and Pyrex is a company that moves forward. Since those dishes, they've come up with Corningware, Visionware, Corel, and many other pieces. So So they're very up to date. Was the Visionware like a later issue of the Flameware? Possibly. Okay. Possibly, yeah. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. I I wouldn't think, I I wouldn't have thought, I mean, it it brings up a cute, interesting story where my father uh, was taking care of my daughter uh, when she was an infant, and he took a Pyrex glass measuring, I'm sorry, Dad. He took a Pyrex glass measuring cup, and he thought it would be okay to set it on the burner of a stove and heat up some water to put a bottle in. It didn't work well. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) So I find it very, very interesting that they actually created a product like a flameware that would stand up to more heat and go on the burner of a stove. Well, you're listening to iAntique with Bruce, and we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. Today, September 27th, the Brass Armadillo is hosting our bi-monthly free appraisal seminar. Come on in. Get two items appraised for free. Starts at 11, but it's on a first-come, first-served basis. If you get here a little bit earlier, you can shop around the store, and you can also enjoy a little bit of breakfast with us. Uh, After the break, we'll be talking more to Marty about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a history. Remember, it doesn't make any difference what you collect or what aspect of the antique business you are in. You're going to learn something here today. 
We'd love to invite you to stop by our store located just off of I-70 between exits 21 and 24. I, for one, would really love to see you there. If you're thinking about antiques as a business, let us know, because we can surely help with that. Are you starting your day with a KCMO morning show and Greg now? I think it's great to have your kids with you on the weekend and do things. But the difference is doing things with them, like going on a bike ride, doing things with them, like going to the park, doing things with them, like taking them out to dinner, not doing things for them. You think you're being nice, you're not. Greg Knapp, mornings 5 till 9 on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. There are reports the U.S.-led coalition attacking militants in Syria has launched airstrikes on positions in the country's east. The plan to go after extremists in Iraq involves help from the ground. The they don't have enough good quality weapons, and the irony being is that IS do, because not very far away there was a huge base that was absolutely jam-packed with modern weaponry given to the Iraqi army by the United States. They left, and they have now got it all, and there's no doubt they had so much it's been distributed elsewhere. Stuart Ramsey with Fox sister network Sky News in Kirkuk. And in Syria, the Americans are hoping to try and gather together about 15,000 effectively free Syrian army fighters to take on both IS and perhaps the Syrian army as well. Four members of a Texas college softball team killed in a collision with a tractor trailer last night in Oklahoma. The women, all from the North Central Texas College softball team. Fox News, we report, you decide. The KCMO forecast from KCTV5. Heading into that weekend forecast with great weather across the area. We'll start off around 60 Saturday morning. We'll take it to a high of 80 degrees with a light breeze into the afternoon, sunny skies. And then on Sunday, more sunshine with a high around 82. I'm KCTV5 Chief Meteorologist Chris Suchan. KCMO is Talk Radio 710 and now 103.7 FM. Something's happening. Know what that is? You will with KCMO. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we know. We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. Hi, Rick Edelman here. Recently, I asked if you have a great financial advisor. Well, let me ask you this. Do you know how to hire one? Here are the top three questions to ask when hiring a financial planner. What are the services they provide? What kind of clients do they work with? And how are they compensated? You want an advisor who offers the services you need, who has clients just like you, and they charge a fee for their service, not commissions for selling products to you. Financial success these days isn't achieved by picking the right investments, but by picking the right investment advisor. Learn how to hire a great, award-winning advisor by getting the 18 questions to ask at rickedelman.com. Or just call us at Edelman Financial Services, 888-PLAN-RICK. That's 888-PLAN-RICK. Or visit rickedelman.com. That's ricedelman.com. Advisory services offered through Edelman Financial Services, LLC. Securities offered through Sanders Morris Harris, Inc., an affiliated broker-dealer. Member FINRA SIPC. Kansas City's talk station, Talk Radio 710, and now at 103.7 FM. The biggest names in talk radio, even easier to listen to. AM, FM, and online at kcmotalkradio.com. Hey, this is Greg Knapp, and if you're looking to change your financial condition, I want you to join us at the Cumulus Media Job Fair. It's presented by PRA Health Sciences, saving lives through excellence in clinical research. Change your life. Change your career. Tuesday, October 7th at Union Station. The area's most sought-after employers will be there to accept your application. Tuesday, October the 7th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Union Station. 
For more information, visit kcjobfair.com. That's kcjobfair.com. KCMO is Talk Radio 710 and now 103.7 FM. Something's happening. Know what that is? You will with KCMO. Welcome back. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and the title of our show today is Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a history. But next week, we're going to be doing a whole show on lamps and lighting with a guest, the Shady Lady, giving us her perspective. We come to you every Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m. on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and on FM 103.7. Don't forget, we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and our sister networking site of iantique.com. If you have any questions, comments, or photos that you'd like to share, please go to iantique.com and click on the Ask Bruce button. There you can send us all you'd like to talk about. Well, Marty, when we left off, we were talking about all the different patterns and colors. I'd like to know, were there lots of different colors or just a few? There are several colors. Uh, The first set that was actually introduced was the primary set, which consists of the yellow, green, blue, and red bowls. They were solid colors. Mm -hmm. And at this time, this is when women started decorating their kitchen. So they picked Pyrex that would go with that color. As the time went on, the greens became popular because of the avocado. Uh, in about the 70s, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, because of the avocado used in the kitchen, as well as the harvest gold. You'll find many patterns in, the, in both of these colors. Well, that's very, very interesting. So colors were introduced in when? 1947. So I'd expect it about that time in 1947, many kitchens were still rather drab, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Up until about the 50s, and that's when they started with the red and white kitchens. Yeah, They introduced yeah. red as, as the primary color, and so they decorated around the red and white. But wasn't the colors in 1947 a big drawing tool for the ladies to, to want the Pyrex to make their kitchens, you know, have, have more color in them? That's true, but I still think Pyrex was um, purchased because of the usefulness of it. Oh, I would totally agree with you there because I still have pieces of it in my cupboard and I'll bet our listeners out there have numerous pieces and some they like more than others, but numerous pieces of Pyrex in in their kitchen cupboards. But back in 1947, some kitchens still had wood stoves and, you know, what they were using was stoneware or wood or, uh, you know, cast iron. So to have a bright, vibrant, colorful piece, wouldn't that, wouldn't that be a good... Uh, good item in that time frame. That's correct. Okay. Well, where are some of the places that people can research all the different patterns and colors, you know, that they would want to learn more about if they're wanting to collect? Well, iAntiques is a place that I go to quite often. And they have a, that website is, is iAntiques.com. And they have different forums that you can sign up to talk about. And one of them is Pyrex. So if I have a question about it, I'll shoot somebody a, 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 an email, and they're back with me within a few minutes most of the time. I just I love that. I love that you pointed that out because that is so very true. It's a social networking site for everybody, all ages, all types of collectibles, and their forum that you were discussing discussing is a great way to be able to get your questions out there and they can you said they could send photos too right that's correct you just upload your photo ask your question and they get back with you (laughs) and and you said within a very short time matter of minutes most of the time i think that's truly amazing well if you're just now joining us we're talking about pyrex a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a history you're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. If you want to become a dealer at the Brass Armadillo, just mention you heard it here, and we'll give you a special rental incentive. Um, what are some other resources uh, for people out there who want to learn about uh, uh, Pyrex other than iAntique? Well, I'm a self-taught person. I loved Pyrex, so when I started picking it up for my booth, I found a website called pyrexlove.com, and on that site, they show you, it's, it's very informative because they show you all the patterns. 
And I just discovered a new site recently called Pyrex Files backslash promotion. And it shows the promotional pieces and it gives you the year that the piece was issued. Wow. What, what is a promotional piece? A promotional piece is um, a one-time issuance of a, a, a new pattern. They introduced them at Christmas time. I found a reference um, when I was doing some research on this. There's not a lot of research out there about promotional pieces. But they were also given out by food companies. And the one oh. I found was a little sage green sized refrigerator dish without a lid that was a promotion for H.J. Heinz. And if you bought three Heinz products, you could buy this little baking dish for 79 cents. Oh, be dog. That's really cool because I, uh, I would think promotional pieces would have a greater value. They do and harder to find. Oh, yeah, because would there not have been near as many Not near as many were issued at the time. Wow. And so you've got two websites that you gave other than iAntique. That's correct. Um, what about books? Are there reference books available? There's one reference book that I use quite a bit, and um, it's a, an author called um, Barbara Mozzie. Barbara Mozzie. Okay. And you can find her on iAntique, but her first book was Collecting Vintage Pyrex, and she just released in June her fifth book about Pyrex. Five books? Mm Mm-hmm. Do they feature anything special, or do they just go through the ages and time frames, or how are they set up? They're set up with pictures and descriptions, and uh, she tells a little bit about each piece. That would be a wonderful resource as well. Um, so I tell you what, decor- I think decorating would have a big draw or pull to it. Uh, can Pyrex be used to decorate around a home? The only place that I use Pyrex is in my kitchen, but I'm sure that there are pieces that could be used for, say, fall decoration, and you fill the bowl with some artificial vegetables or fruit, and you place it up on your fire fireplace especially the pattern called autumn harvest uh, because it reminds you of fall (laughs) well i know my mother had a china cabinet and in that china cabinet she kept a lot of her pyrex pieces because they brought a lot of vibrant color and i know that she liked to have different colors for some different times of the year and and i could totally see that and then uh many of those small little refrigerator dishes work great you know in other rooms of the house to, to give They're a splash of candy color. dishes or good nut servers. Use them on your table when you're having a party and put your condiments in them. So I, I totally get it because I've seen some of the patterns, and some of the patterns are beautiful. You said your favorite is is what? It's um, the one I call Amish Wedding, which is butterprint. And then you have a set that's called? Pink Gooseberry. Pink Gooseberry. Did that come in other colors? It did come in other colors. Um, it came in a, 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 an orange and white. The dish is primary orange, and the, the figures are, or the dish is primary white, and the figures are all orange. And it also comes in a black and white. Really? And the gooseberry just has a pattern of gooseberries on the side. Is that correct? That's correct, with pink bowls, which were very popular. Pink and gray and pink and black was very popular <laughs> back in the 50s and early 60s. Good colors, good colors. Um, are there any issues with reproductions when you're dealing with Pyrex? So if you're going out looking for one, do you have issues? No, because Pyrex doesn't reissue any other dishes or reproduce them. They just keep moving on to more modern things. I got you. So there, so you can definitely date pretty much anything you find out there as a collector or as a piece you want to find just by its appearance. That's correct. Because they didn't manufacture anymore. Okay. What about other companies like Fire King, uh, also known as the Hawking Glass Company? Uh, what do they have to do with Pyrex or how have they promoted or taken away from Pyrex pieces? Well, Fire King, now known as Anchor Hawking, was the green jadeite dishes that you see. But there were glass bake and 
there was um, just Fire King for a while, and they had some decorated bowls. But I and also there was there was a lot of early glass companies in the 1900s, and um, they were Indiana Glass, Hazel Atlas. But my favorite is still the Pyrex. I, I, they have more colors. They definitely had more colors, more variety of pieces. But remember, here's what we can do for you. If you love antiques and you love to look for antiques, put that together and you have the start of a fun and exciting business. The Brass Armadillo can help with just that. We'll be able to take care of all your business details and you only need to stop in and select your booth or showcase to get started. We make it very simple. You can start a business for less than $100 per month. When we return, we'll hear some more about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and a history. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce. I'm Bruce. We're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. KCMO, Kansas City's home of Mark Levin. Mark Levin. So the bigger problem or the bigger issue is the welfare state. It's the welfare state, whether we're talking about longtime American citizens, Hispanics, Asians, blacks, whites, everything in between. It's the welfare state that's killing the Republican Party, just as it's killing the nation. The Great One, weekdays 5 to 8 on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we know. We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. This is Catherine from Olathe, Kansas. Well, I started at 252 pounds and did not like where I was. Um, I did the surgery not even a year later. I was at 160 pounds and I am loving every minute of it. I love getting dressed and shopping and ready to do anything. Minimally Invasive Surgery Hospital. The doctors follow up with you every month. There are support groups uh, once a month, as well as rules class every single week with the doctors themselves. Minimally Invasive Surgery Hospital holds free weight loss seminars on Saturdays. I love the number of options they have available. They also accept Missouri Medicaid. For someone on the fence of weight loss surgery, I would say go for it. You don't really have anything to lose other than weight, and um, it just makes you feel good. Minimally Invasive Surgery Hospital. Attend a free weight loss seminar. Saturday, September 27th, call 913-322-7401 or laplose.com. You're the type who likes to seize the day, all 30 of them, during Member September. All month long, almost anything you get at Rite Aid gets you three times the Wellness Plus points, which gets you to gold and 20% off almost everything in the store three times faster. Yep, the best program in the business is now even better by three, but only during Member September and only at Rite Aid. Activate your membership at memberseptember.com today. Right Aid. With us, it's personal. Limitations apply. Prescriptions ineligible for triple points. See store for details. Hey, Bob, how's business? Is the new website helping? Not good. I, I can't figure out how to get the website finished. How did you do it? Easy. I called web.com. They built my website for free. Then they promoted it on all the search engines. Like Google, Yahoo, and Bing? Exactly. And Web.com has helped grow my business so much, I had to bring on new staff. Hey, if Web.com did it for you, they're perfect for me. Call now, 1-800-535-8815. That's 1-800-535-8815. Again, 1-800-535-8815. The Diagnostic Imaging Center's Health and Wellmobile, in participation with SunFresh Grocery, Wins Wellness Innovation and Nursing Services, and CareWorks, brings health and wellness directly to you. Free and low-cost health screens, scans, and health education information are provided daily in communities all around Kansas City. This week, visit us at the Zona Rosa Whisper Walk, the Fab Four at the Midland Theater, and Anderson County Corn Festival. For specific dates and times and services offered at each Health and Wellmobile tour stop, visit us online at healthwellmobile.com. That's HealthWellmobile.com. 
Maybe it's time to take a fresh look at everything we thought we knew about landing a great job. For instance, perhaps great careers start at the middle school science fair instead of at the job fair. Because the fact is, the jobs of the future will be heavily geared towards science, technology, engineering, and math. In other words, STEM. So if you're a student, talk to your school counselor about STEM. If you're a parent, talk to your kids. A public service message from America's Navy. Greg now. Coming up Monday on the show, 735, Kiss front man Gene Simmons in town for his restaurant in Overland Park. We're going to talk to him about the news of the day. He's never politically correct. It's on the KCMO Morning Show. We have been talking to Marty Lugin about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and history. I'm Bruce with I Antique with Bruce. Don't forget, you can send us your questions, comments, or photos at iantique.com. Once there, click on the Ask Bruce button and send them to me there. I've been the general manager at the Brass Armadillo for almost 17 years now, and we're located in Grain Valley, Missouri, and we're open from 9 to 9, 7 days a week, 364 days a year. Remember, it's the best place for the best value. I hope you come by and see what you can find. But we're talking to Marty Lugin about Pyrex, a glass with an extreme work ethic and history. Marty, let's delve back into some of the other questions that that come up in my mind. Uh, But you mentioned that uh, Pyrex is a better product than plastic. Why? Plastic's cheaper. Plastic's cheaper, but plastic is a petroleum-based product. And so that means that the oils that are coming from Saudi Arabia and those companies are being used to make the plastic. Plastic can melt, it can leave a taste, or it can stain your container. And Pyrex is better because it cooks at a lower temperature rather than... um, So it's dispersing the heat better. That's correct. Um, there's no stains or taste glass or Pyrex. They're more consistently uh, in baking. They make a better product. And it absorbs rather than reflects the oven heat. So so the, the glass itself is distributing it, absorbs the heat better than the plastic, which just kind of melts and curls around it. And That's right. And gives, gives it a petroleum taste. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I was just wanting to sum that up so that I understood. You know, being a man, I don't do as much of the cooking, <laughs> so so I I have to understand. But the glass does hold heat very very well, and yes. I think that's one of the reasons why. Like my sister had to have some glass baking and refrigerator dishes. Uh, Pyrex is is very durable product. Uh, why do you think they made it so strong? You know, so that it would stand up in the kitchen. Well, for the reasons I mentioned before. It's a better product because it cooks at a lower temperature, so you're saving fuel. There's no stains in your dish or a taste, and it's more consistent with baking. I, I can believe that. Does the, uh, you, you mentioned earlier also that Pyrex is becoming a little more scarce, especially That's... in certain patterns and certain colors. Do you think this scarcity adds to the value of the pieces? Very much so. Um, it costs dealers more now to purchase the Pyrex, so we have to raise the price. Um, and some of them look pretty outrageous in comparison to a set of bowls costing two dollars and seventy nine cents when they were first issued. And now some sets bring up over a hundred dollars. Two wow, two hundred and seven, two dollars and seventy nine cents up to a hundred dollars today. Yes. That sounds like a pretty good investment, pretty good return on some money if you had it and took really good care Care of it. it. Well, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about Pyrex, a glass that has an extreme work ethic and history. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. If you'd like to become a dealer at the Brass Armadillo, just mention that you heard it here on the show, and I'll give you a special rental incentive. Um, let's go over a little bit about the history of Pyrex. You said there's some interesting attributes to that. There is. The uh, Corning Company was already in business at the time before they made a break off to the Pyrex division. And they were approached in 1903 by the railroad because the lantern globes, when they got wet or snowed upon and it was cold would shatter 
So they asked Pyrex to come up with a stronger glass to make the globes more efficient. They did that, but it cut into their pocket because they weren't selling so many other replacement goals. Okay. And then in 1913, Bessie Littleton, the wife of the company's newest scientist, asked her husband to bring home a substitute for some ovenware that she'd been using because she used it twice and it cracked. Oh. The next day, her husband brought home the bottom of two sawed-off battery jars. (laughs) Okay. That evening, she baked a sponge cake and was impressed that the cooking time was shorter. The cake did not stick to the glass. After it was washed, it didn't have a smell or a flavor to it. And she liked the clearness of the glass because she could watch it and see when it was done. So Mr. Littleton took his wife's cake back to the office the next day and... Everyone agreed that it was a a more uniform product. They also liked the cake. (laughs) I would, too. You always make me hungry when you talk about that. Okay, so it began a two-year research project to introduce the clear glass ovenware. And in 1915, the ovenware was introduced. Women were very apprehensive at this time, so Pyrex enlisted the help of Sarah Tom- Tyson Rohr. She was the editor of the Ladies' Home Journal to, mo- to promote the product at Corning-sponsored demonstrations and later in department stores. She demonstrated the Pyrex. Wow. So uh, Pyrex, being glass mm-hmm. and having all the colors and the patterns, Mm-hmm. Uh, it brings up a question that, you know, I mean, we a lot of us have dishwashers. Should you put your Pyrex pieces in the dishwasher? A lot of people do, but it will damage your design or fade the Pyrex color. So it, it should always be hand washed. Yeah, because of the harsh detergents in the dishwasher. I hear that a lot with vintage items. And there's a, a, a couple of other secrets that I've learned along the way. One of them is if you have a really... You find a piece at a garage sale, but it's really grease-covered and has a lot of crud on it. I take it home, spray it with an oven cleaner, put it in a plastic bag, set it out on my deck in the sun for two days, and it will take all that grease off and clean it up. Wow, that's really cool. I know that we uh, actually have a product at the Brass Armadillo called Never Dull that works on glass, and it won't hurt the color. Right. I, I think that there, there's a lot of uh, really unique aspect to that. Uh, but anyways, uh, next week's show is going to be on lamps and lighting from the shady lady perspective. You're listening to I antique with Bruce and we are sponsored by the brass armadillo and I antique.com. Remember, it doesn't make any difference what you collect or what aspect of the antique business you are in. You're going to learn something here today and every Saturday from six to 7 a.m. Marty has been a wonderful guest today, and I just want to tell her thank you for stopping in and sharing a little bit about an item she has a passion for. I'd also like to invite you to stop by our store located just off of I-70 between exits 21 and 24. I hope to see you there. If you're thinking about antiques as a business, the Brass Armadillo is the perfect outlet. And I, for one, would love to make you a part of our family. New dealers are like oxygen. They breathe life into the industry. There's still plenty of treasures out there. Could you be the one that finds the next hot item? Go ahead, take a retro road trip to the Brass Armadillo and join us for a vintage adventure. The Brass Armadillo is the best place for the best value. Come see what you can find.